Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Avram. I'm here with Dr. Jeff Klein, who is the recipient of the Richard Fitzpatrick Honorary Lecture at the Masters of Aesthetics meeting, um, 2017. Jeff, um, first of all, congratulations. You're in the company of the two previous recipients, are Rox Anderson and Gene Carruthers, and, and uh, you have accomplished so much in, in the field of uh, aesthetics and dermatology. And uh, the, the first thing I wanted to ask you is just basically, just give us a basic understanding of uh, tumescent anesthesia. Okay. Well, tumescent anesthesia is a form of local anesthesia using lidocaine. And it's a very dilute solution containing lidocaine and epinephrine. It's, traditionally, the commercial versions of local anesthesia are 1% uh, lidocaine, which means it's a gram in 100 milliliters of solution, gram of lidocaine. And uh, that is very concentrated. And it turns out that if you uh, dilute it tenfold, the efficacy improves dramatically. You wouldn't expect that something dil more dilute is going to be an improvement. But it, as it happens, when you have a very dilute solution and you're using a large volume of it, it spreads out under the skin and shrinks all of the local capillaries and so the local anesthetic stays there for a very long time and, uh, and shrinks all the blood vessels so when you're doing a surgical procedure in the skin, there's no bleeding. That's, that, that's an exceptional part of it. And because it's so dilute, it, it's absorbed very slowly so you can use much higher dosages, total dosages of the local anesthetic. So not only do you get more solution, but you use much higher dosage. So for uh, commercial lidocaine, the maximum uh, amount that you can use is 50 cc's, which is like two shot glasses. But with uh, tumescent anesthesia, the maximum dosage is more like uh, two liters. So you, it's, it's 40, 50 times the volume that you can use that makes it a lot safer and more effective. So let me ask you, uh, since it is not a, you know, a common sense thought that one may have that, that using less of this would be more effective. How did you come up with the idea behind tumescent anesthesia? Uh, well, I, it, was, it was sort of trial and error. I, I did a surgical procedure, a little liposuction. I was learning how to do liposuction, and I didn't want to do it under general anesthesia. So I tried the 1% lidocaine with epinephrine, and there's just a small amount, just two shot glasses full, and I was doing some liposuction just above a hysterectomy scar. Uh, and it was very effective. I could take that little bit of fat that was there, uh, but it was painful as I injected it, and uh, the patient had a rapid heart rate because of the epinephrine. Because the local anesthetic was so effective, I figured that I could probably dilute it a little bit. So the next time I did a procedure, I diluted it uh, in another 100 cc's of saline, and it was better. It was less pain and less tachycardia, and I had more solution. So the third time, I diluted it even more. And the fourth time, even more. And pretty soon, I was, it was a tenfold dilution, and it was still working really well. But now, it changed everything. At, the, at that point in time, liposuction was associated with a lot of blood loss. And almost everybody who had liposuction had to have a, a, a transfusion, an autologous transfusion. So they had to give their blood in advance, have liposuction, and they gave them their blood back because there's so much blood loss. But with this technique, there was zero blood loss. And that was the revolution. And, and let me ask you, as you developed this procedure and you saw success with it, was there resistance? In medicine, a lot of times when you do something innovative, there are a lot of people who don't necessarily agree with what you're doing or? Yeah. Well, this is one of those situations where you had a problem and, and an obvious solution. And it, the change from massive blood loss to no blood loss was so dramatic that there was no statistical test required. It was just like you do one and then that's it. it. It's almost like when you're treating pneumonia with horse serum and all of a sudden someone gave you penicillin and everybody survived. You didn't need a 
a test. <laughs> you just knew it worked, and that's it was so dramatic that it was there was uh, accepted very quickly. The big resistance was that most of the people who were doing the liposuction were plastic surgeons, and they had a hard time uh, accepting the fact that a dermatologist thought of this. <laughs> okay, and then uh, finally. Are there any new frontiers or new applications that you anticipate for tumescent anesthesia? There, there are always new uh, things that I haven't even thought about, but the two things that I'm thinking about recently is adding an antibiotic to the solution and injecting that antibiotic under the skin on the abdomen before a, a colorectal surgical procedure. It, it will reduce the pain because of the local anesthesia, it reduces the bleeding, and the antibiotic that's in there will stay there for hours and hours at much higher concentrations that can never be achieved by intravenous delivery. So I think it's going to dramatically reduce the risk of surgical site infections in that procedure. Colorectal surgery is often associated with about 15 to 25 percent infection rate at a surgical site, so it can probably make a big difference. That's one. And the other more uh, imaginative uh, application is to treat uh, snake bites, uh, snake envenomation or from poisonous snakes affects a million people worldwide every year and there's probably, according to the World Health Organization, about 100,000 people die every year from it and a hundred, more than 100,000 people have amputations because of it so, and this is a neglected disease and it turns out that if you use tumescent anesthesia you delay the absorption of the venom. So if it's a neurotoxic venom, it might uh, delay the venom uh, absorption long enough so that a victim can get to a hospital and get antivenom. Right now, many patients die on their way to the hospital. So if we can delay it, instead of having a patient die in four hours, they die in eight to 10 hours, they'll have enough time to get to the hospital. So that's, that's our hope. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's a very innovative uh, frontier for uh, tumescent anesthesia. Uh, Dr. Klein, thank you again um, for uh, an outstanding talk today. Congratulations on uh, your award, and uh, thank you for coming to the meeting this year. It's a pleasure speaking with you and seeing you again. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm, I'm very, uh, very flattered. Thank you.